Insects are serious competitors for human food resources. Man has stepped in to disturb the balance of nature and his activities have led to evolutional changes in the behavior of certain insects that have, so to speak, become domesticated. Some insects, for example, became pests of grain, nuts and dried fruit as soon as early gatherers began to bring them into store. Once they reach adulthood, insect pests living in stored foods are usually quite easy to see in the characteristic shape of the fully formed insect. But during their development stage, they remain invisible. With most species, it is the larvae, their small forms comfortably hidden inside the grains that are the big eaters. Invisible though they are, one can detect their presence from the very high-pitched airborne sounds they emit and the mechanical vibrations they cause. As the vibrations are very slight, they can only be detected and made audible by means of suitable transductors linked to an appropriate amplification system that eliminates background noise and disturbances. One can then clearly hear the cracking of the weevil or the scratching sound of the Angamus grain moth caterpillar inside the grain. In the laboratory, with the aid of high sensitivity measuring microphone covering the entire sound spectrum placed in grain infested with large number of insects, one can detect the airborne sounds created by their activities. As they move about, the adults scratch the grains with their sharp claws. It sounds like the patter of rain on a tarmac road. When there are only larvae in the grain, the airborne sounds captured by the measuring microphone are very weak and sound like this. Although this type of insect activity does produce airborne sound, it mainly sets up mechanical vibrations which are louder and travel better. Using an appropriate vibration pickup that reconstitutes the most sensitive part of the spectrum audible to man, one can easily hear the insects nibbling away inside the grains. The only special requirements are to operate at a temperature above 15 degrees and to first allow the grain to settle for a few minutes. With uninfested grain, all one can hear is a continuous murmur, which is in fact background noise from the electronic system itself. Now let's listen to weevil larvae in grains of soft wheat.
Although one can see no signs of insects and the grain looks perfectly undamaged, one can hear an uninterrupted chorus of insect jaws at work. Beware! In a few months, the adults will emerge and reproduce. In Durham wheat, the rice weevil larvae find it harder to scrape at the grain and the sound changes. One particular weevil larvae close to the pickup can be heard very clearly. Listen to it nibble, pause, nibble and pause. Let's listen to the same species in soft wheat again. The pitch is lower. One really does get the impression that this is softer grain. One can even sense the flour produced in quantity by those voracious jaws. And still the same scraping sound, quite clear in the second part of the recording. The tiny lesser grain borer is not as noisy as the weevil, but it is an indefatigable pest once it reaches adulthood. This next recording is of larvae in a sample of durum wheat. There is a hollower, more resonant sound, suggestive of breaking grains. These insects eat in a very different way to the weevils. Because of the shape and positioning of their jaws, these larvae shear through the grain as a pair of pinchers. With the biggest of the three weevil species, the maize weevil, though it also lives in durum wheat, the gnawing can be heard loud and clear. Here it is mainly newly formed adults that are busily boring their way out of the grain where they have fed throughout the infancy to the open air where they will reproduce.
Can insects be recognized by the noises they make? The recordings we have just heard suggest that, with a little practice, one probably can recognize insect species from the sounds they make. There are certain, particularly clear-cut sounds that suggest precise situations. Mixed adult and larval stage lesser grain borers in a batch of barley, one of their favorite cereals, are untiring eaters. At the adult stage, they seem to eat fanatically, insatiably. They are wasteful eaters too, leaving behind quantities of frass, a gray powdery excrement typical of the way they work. Here is the sound of the same insects in Surgham. Grain weevil larvae also infest rye, making a noise that sounds like grains rubbing together in rapid rhythm. They sound a little agitated in their constant quest for food. Rice weevils give an impression of twisting and turning. One can hear the snapping of the grain albumen. These are loud, short sounds. A mice weevil in Surga makes a great deal of noise. Maybe its quarters are a little cramped, considering its size compared to the grain of serum. These weevils are able to adapt their size to fit the grain they have chosen for a home. This one is a young adult and seems to be in a hurry to get out.
The mice weaver is much more at home in a grain of maize, nibbling steadily, cautiously scraping into flour the albumen in the soft part of the grain. Maize may also shelter the caterpillar of the angermus grain moth. The adult can often be seen fluttering about the fields at harvest time. In summer, it develops at an astonishing rate. The moth emerges barely a month from the day the very young caterpillar first crawls inside the grain. In the meantime, a third of the grain has disappeared eaten away from the inside. Here one can see the perfect circle of a tiny hole, exit from the gallery the caterpillar hollowed out before its metamorphosis. Sometimes, when grain in store seems absolutely healthy and clean, the insides of the grain may be like little caves into which air can filter only through the walls and where the creature only needs to break off a bit of wall to feed itself. What better way of visualizing this than by listening to the inhabitants at work? Other insect species make their own characteristic sounds, like this Indian meal moth caterpillar weaving its silk. This is the drugstore beetle, hollowing out galleries in his favorite biscuits.
Automatic detection of hidden insects is possible with pickups that are sensitive within a very narrow frequency band specific to the type of sound we have been listening to. This way, one can detect only that part of the sound emitted that incorporates the most energy. Automatic processing of the signals received can easily supply usable quantitative information. With pickups like these, sound has a characteristically metallic sound. To give an example, Weevils in barley betray their presence by quite characteristic sounds. This type of detection gives early warnings of the emergence of the adults, which will inevitably breed and multiply if they are not detected and destroyed in time. Acoustic detection can be of use in other ways besides forecasting insect pest damage in stored grain, pulses, nuts, dry fruit and tobacco. Man has thought many changes in the natural world and some insects have evolved along with human activity. For example, wooden buildings have been colonized by termites, longhorn beetles, furniture beetles, death watch beetles. Termites are especially fond of floorboards, woodwork and structural beams in the old houses of southwestern France and Paris. As they never show themselves by daylight, it is hard to detect the early stages of an attack without acoustic detection. Beware of old houses that set home buyers dreaming. It is a wise precaution to listen first. If you hear noises, it may be best to look elsewhere. This is the steady, regular sound of slow, effective work. Termites possess unlimited patience and they are very hard to control. Stranger still is the way some insects have evolved with recent progress in insulating materials. In the insulated walls of modern poultry sheds, there is no need to amplify the sound. You can hear just by paying attention. These are the larvae and adults of the lesser mealworm. Since expanded polystyrene and other polyurethane foams first came on the market, these larvae have found them an idle place to metamorphose, safe from insecticides and other dangers. These larvae have come from the poultry manure pits, migrating the short distance required to colonize the wall insulation. They hollow out their galleries with their jaws, crumbling the insulating material into dust. The adults emerge inside the polystyrene and complete the galleries to get out.
How are insects able to adapt so fast? These larvae like the feel of extruded polystyrene and as it is very easy to bar through, they are saved the arduous work of boring into harder materials like wood. Here one can clearly hear the sound of the larvae as the rub against the walls of tunnels hollowed out in polystyrene. Insects are to be found everywhere on our planet. No food store is safe from their polluting or destructive activity. They cause a great deal of economic damage too. By listening to the sounds made by insects, one can stop them breeding by early detection at a stage when they cannot be seen by the naked eye. The following sequences allow us to evaluate the rhythm of activity of insect larvae in grains. First example, the rice weevil in durum wheat. Second example, Argomas grain moth in mice. Third example, grain weevil in barley.
fourth example, the communication signals of termites soldiers in wood.